Hey everybody, this is Christina with leadsandleverage.com and I am coming at you live again today. And if you're watching this in replay, remember, let me know that you're here. Go ahead and make a comment below the video or beside the video. Let me know you're here. Um, I love to meet you as the beginning of every single video that I do. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to get to know you, um, etc. So today I'm actually going to talk about the six reasons why your Facebook ads aren't working and what you can do about it. So we're going to go into that a little bit. So as I'm waiting for everybody to come and join into all of this, um, I want to ask where you're from. So if you'll let me know where you're from in the comments, that would be great. Um, let me know where you're from. Let me know uh, if you're a real estate agent. Let me know. And just little things. Um, are you running Facebook ads right now? Or have you run Facebook ads in the past? Um, so we're going to hit on the six reasons why Facebook ads, why your Facebook ads aren't working and what you can do about it. That's what we're going to do today. So I want to give a minute for everybody to come in. If you notice I don't have a backdrop today. It's just my old calendar that I need to prep for 2017. And are you guys? Hello. I see you on there. But I don't see you commenting or saying hi or letting me know where you're from. So hopefully it's just a little bit of a delay that I'm going to be getting. So hopefully you guys will start engaging here in a minute. Yesterday's live cast was awesome. I had so much fun doing it. It was all about live streaming. So if you missed it, it is in my videos on Leads and Leverage page. You can pop in there and get it. Hey, Dan. Awesome. Olympia, Washington. I'm in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, so I'm not too far from you. Well, same coast. <laughs> Pretty close to there. It's gorgeous out today. So that's nice. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Facebook, the, the, the six reasons Facebook ads aren't working and what you can do about it. Um, and one of the things I'm looking at my notes, um, what I what I noticed, what, what's really inspired this was um, when I was doing coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, I no longer do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but when I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, I noticed that, you know, my clients would struggle with Facebook ad strategy. Um, and there was something that I realized that it, it wasn't so much... Um, it, 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 they weren't just struggling. There was a lot of mental roadblocks going on. <clears throat> so, and I've, I've kind of analyzed this and I, I have, so, I have some notes. You can't see them, but I have some notes over here. Um, one of those perspectives or one of the things that we tend to come at as real estate agents, um, we come at Facebook ads the same way we come out, come at every single way. Hey, Mary, I saw Mary's like on there, but I didn't see Mary in the comments or it didn't show her that she joined, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things that we tend to do is we come at this from the perspective of, oh, I need to advertise my listings, or oh, I need to advertise my open houses, um, or oh, I need to promote free CMAs, or um, look at all my notes, oh, I need to get my name out there. You know, we come out from that perspective. And so what I was noticing is that we have been led to believe that reach and engagement on an ad is a viable reason, um, is a valid method, a valid way to analyze whether an ad has actually done well, while where whether it's succeeded. Hi, Lisa. So I wanted to really kind of address that and challenge that a little bit and then give you some uh, ideas beyond that um, or perspective beyond that so that you actually have results. Because as far as I'm concerned, when I run ads, I don't care about getting my name out there. Everything that I do, everything that I focus on is to build a relationship so I can capture a lead. So so there's, there's two aspects. I want to capture leads I want to nurture leads. I want to capture prospects into my funnel. I want to nurture them in my funnel. I want to help people get from here where they don't know me to here where they know, like, and trust me. So that's my whole goal with everything I do. When we focus on ads to um, advertise our listings, that doesn't do any of that. Um, when we focus on ads for exposure or name awareness, you know, all that kind of stuff, that doesn't do that. Um, it doesn't do it at all. It doesn't, and, and then we go and say, well, if I had a logo that had the right colors, then, you know, cause colors mean stuff, then that would work. And 
It doesn't. Or if I had the right website with the right colors, the right theme or the right feeling. Guys, all that stuff, none of that stuff actually really truly helps or hinders. What helps or hinders is you. <laughs> How are you? What's your perspective? Are you just trying to push stuff out there to try and grab something? Or are you trying to take people from a don't know you to a know, like, and trust you aspect? And this is, so from don't know you to know, like, and trust you, from someone you don't know to someone who's a client. That's, that's the journey. So that's the whole journey on there. So um, the problem in real estate is we have been taught that getting our name out there and exposure is just super awesome and that's what we should do and that's how you advertise. So we do it and we throw money at it and we think, crap, why doesn't it work? Um, or we get something and we get all excited not realizing that, okay, maybe we spent $100 on that something but then we forget that we just spent a thousand dollars over the last six months getting nothing. So really, we spent eleven, you know, eleven hundred on this thing to get that one lead. Um, so there's just a lot of stuff on there. So I'm gonna talk about um, six things that we do. So uh, um, I'm trying to think of just a minute. We think that all exposure is good exposure. It's not. It's not. So we need to be careful of that. We think the more traffic, the better. It's not. You need the right traffic. So because some of those things, because we kind of think these things, we project those onto how we do our ads. So I'm going to challenge this. Your, your advertising strategy on Facebook um, starts with your mindset. Starts with your mindset. Um, when you change your mindset, you're going to change the results that you get. So let me, let me go into that. You're going to spend less time. You're going to spend less money. You're going to get more clients. That's really what's going to happen on there. So what I want to do real quick is um, let me know you're here. Put a comment in there. Um, so we're, who else is here? Uh, where are you guys from? And one more question. Answer any one of these that you want. Uh, but put it in the comments. One more question. What uh, What do you think? If you have you have you ever run a Facebook ad before? We'll just start with that. Yes or no. So just put those in there and it takes me, it takes about 10, 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds for me to actually see them. So go ahead and put those in there. I'd like to know. I'd like to know kind of where everybody is on that. I'll be quiet for just a moment and I'll just sit here and stare at you. Just kidding. <laughs> well, I guess I am kind of staring at you and you can stare right back at me. Only I can't see you. So you just have to comment. Ha <laughs> Yeah. Mary's like, I'm here in you know where, but I'm moving to Olympia. Yeah, Dan. So so Dan, Mary's moving to Olympia. That's right. Dan's run a Facebook ad to advertise a property. Dan, tell me, how did that go for you? I mean, what, did you, what kind of results did you see? A pop Mary's like, I have run tons of ads. Cool. What, what do you, what was your most, um, uh, for Mary, what was your favorite ad to run? Um, not the best results. What was your favorite ad to run? So Dan, I had one question for you. Um, how, what were your, what, how did it go? And then Mary, what was your favorite ad? Okay, so Dan said one to two interested persons, lots of lookers. Did either one of those two people turn into an appointment or a closing for you? And guys, this isn't a like, I told you so. I'm just curious. I'm, I'm curious, that's it, on this. Helps me kind of see uh, where the gaps are. Um, so if you're if you're having a little bit hard time converting from you know some interest to an appointment, that I can help you with. The, you know all the different things I can help you. Okay, cool. No appointment or closing. Okay, so um, Mary, as you tell me your favorite ad to run, it. anybody else? Let me know. So yeah, so Mary says favorite ad. I love creating ads, but I have gotten zero other than tons of page likes. Okay, so um, so but what was your favorite one to run? I'm gonna talk about results. So sometimes I run an ad that I love. I love the image. I love the verbiage. I think it's fun and it flops. Um, so I don't really. It, so in this question, I'm just asking, what was your favorite one to run? Um, what was it for? Was it for listings? Was it for um, buyers? Was it for an open house? What was it for? Just in general. Um, okay, so I looking at my notes here. <laughs> Tip number one, there's six of these that we're going to go over. And I am limited on time. I have a class to teach. It's blogging boot camp module three today. And I have to teach that in 50, 49 minutes. So <laughs> we only have about 40 minutes <laughs> to, to meet today. Um, so first up, 
the very first thing that um, that we that 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 really causes our ads to flop is we don't know what our goal is for the ad. Now, let me preface that. I actually asked that question in the Facebook for Real Estate Agents group a while back and someone answered, I'm reading my notes because I wrote an article that I'm gonna be sharing. It's leads, of course. That's the only reason to run a Facebook ad. And I was thinking, well, no, actually, that's not the only reason to um, re you run a Facebook ad is to get leads. So so my, my response to this was, do you ask someone to marry them the first time you meet them? Before you've talked to them, you look at them, hey, wanna get married? Is that what you do? Um, so you first, you have to work up the guts to approach them. Then you have to go through the process. Now, for some people, that process took two days. For some people, that process took 10 years. But you still, there's still a process from the moment you see someone to the marriage. Um, so what's your goal for the ad? Don't try to go immediately for the appointment. <clears throat> And there are a number of reasons why. You wanna approach people first, engage their interest. So you wanna find out what they want before you force on them what you think they want. So that's what I mean by what's your goal for the ad. So if your goal for the ad is to get a listing appointment, um, that's the ultimate goal, then you need to actually step back and say, okay, what's the journey people take to get to the listing appointment? What's that journey? Is it, hey, here's an ad. Oh yeah, I'm gonna call that person and I'm gonna go list my house with them. No, it's not. There's there's farther side. Okay, what's the process on the journey? So I guess what I need to do is I need to give them um, some knowledge about listing their house for sale. You know, not necessarily with a realtor, but maybe, you know, approach them with different offers. Okay, so the the, the best way to do that is to layer your advertising strategy. Okay, so the, the, so one layer is page like ads. And I know that a lot of people are saying they're not worth it, but there are a couple of um, well-known people that have proven that page like ads are very much worth it. They lower our cost of advertising later. They raise the interest. We get higher returns for them. So, you know, what about running a page like ad to an someone who's already an email subscriber of yours? What about... Um, you know, test out. You run a page like ad to an email subscriber, they click like on your page. Then you go, okay, I'm gonna test this. Um, I I want a seller, so I'm gonna run an ad for the top 10 things you shouldn't do if you're selling your home. So you have all these different things, these ways. You need to bring people step by step through the journey. If you're just pushing out your listings because you, or you're just pushing out the CMA or home value ads because you want a listing appointments, that's why one, capture rates suck and conversion rates from on the captures suck. You wanna go farther back on the journey and bring them through the journey so that by the time that you do get a home value ad in front of them, guess what? They know, like, and trust you and they're like, dude, just come list my house. Sorry about the dude, guys. I've got four boys. Um, it slips out every so often. Hey, Mary. Let's see, Mary, I created a movie called What's Your Story and it was a bunch of images about happy people. Yeah, my movie was awesome, but probably not clear that they were supposed to click to find their happy new home. <laughs> That's awesome. You live and learn, don't you? <laughs> Things like that are fun, but don't necessarily bring in the results. Hey, Ben, I see you joined. So anybody who's new uh, or coming in, let me know you're here. Let me know where you're from. Just make a comment in there. That's, that would be great. So step number one is to truly know what your goal is for the ad. And the goal is not the closing table. Yes, we know that's the ultimate goal, but what's the goal for the ad that you're gonna run? That's number one. Number two, this one's big, this one's big. Um, who are you targeting? Now, a lot of the, the big vendors out there that are saying that they're run, running their your ads for you for Facebook, this is where they fail, big time. First of all, they'll target maybe just your zip code or they'll target maybe just your zip code and homeowners, um, hmm, that that's too, still too broad. So, so we, and a lot of agents, a lot of agents, do you know how many ads I get in my newsfeed from places? I'm in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. That's between Washington and Montana, just south of, of just about 80 miles south of Canada. I get ads for listings in Arizona to South Florida. I'm not kidding. I get I get ads for that. That means, guess what? The agents are not targeting people. 
you need to target. So um, you want to go beyond the basic targeting. If you're going to be running a listing ad and you have a listing on a golf course, I'm going to use this as an example. You've got a listing on a golf course. First of all, you need to target. Don't use the renter's targeting or the likely to move targeting in Facebook. The likely to move is predictive. Um, it's not very accurate. Um, it's just not really accurate. Um, and the renters one, not 100% accurate. Homeowners one, really good, really accurate because there's actual good data out there that Facebook can access to give you that. So if you have a listing on a golf course, you're going to want people probably who, one, who can afford it. So you want to do an income uh, uh, you want to target by their income range that would afford, want, want to be in that neighborhood. The second thing is you probably want somebody who's interested in golf. Now, I realize that not everybody who lives on a golf course is interested in golf, but a good portion of people who are interested in golf would love to live on a golf course. So you need to have that targeting. You also want to have zip code targeting, things like that. If it's a move up golf course home, probably is, then you probably want to have a homeowner in a lower home price market. So there's several things here that you could be doing. You need to target, you need to spend some time targeting accurately. So, and this is not in terms of buyers or sellers, this is in terms of who's the perfect person for that ad that you're gonna be running. Third, step three, what are you offering them? So what's in it for them? I think I might be gonna be sneeze. I hope I hope I don't sneeze. Um, are you giving them something that they think has value? Let's face it, People don't think CMAs are valuable. <laughs> don't even pretend that, oh, I normally charge $250 for one of these. That's bull crap. Realtors don't charge for them. They all know it. They don't think a CMA is valuable. They can get their value from their tax assessment or from Zillow or from, and I know, but Christina, those aren't accurate. Those aren't real values. They don't know that. The values that they're getting are good enough for them. So you need to think beyond this. If you want them to believe you, when you tell them that Zestimates suck, then you've got to give them value through other means. Actual value, not, oh yeah, this is what everybody does. So give them value. You know, most homeowners can get their, their information from Zillow or their county assessor. So you need to give something better. You've got to build a relationship so that they'll trust you. So if you think that see a free CMA or a home value is something valuable, it's not. It's not. So think about something else. Fourth, what's your call to action? We put ads out there and there's no call to action. We think there is because it's an ad. Like Mary just commented, you know, I, it wasn't probably wasn't that clear that they were supposed to click on my ad. So we need to have a call to action, not a, wouldn't you enjoy blah, 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 blah. You need to very, very clear it. Do you have you, um, don't you then do this? Do you want blank, 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 then do this. Very clear, very direct. You need to tell people what to do. We're so overwhelmed with information and we're just on information overload. It's like, oh my gosh, it's just beyond ridiculous that we don't take subtle hints. Um, unless we're super insanely focused on that, which we're so easily distracted, we're, subtle hints don't work that well. So, hey, Jason, Parker, Colorado. Awesome. Um, so you need to be, you know, don't use hints. You need to be direct. You need to have a direct call to action. Why? I'm going to read my notes again. Um, what are you going to say that will capture their attention? Why should they respond to your ad? Are you creating kind of an angst in them that makes them feel like, oh, I need to do this. I need to click here. I need to find out more. Are you saying something that compels them to respond? Are you solving a problem? There's a reason that we tend to click on clickbait, although we're becoming smart to it. So see, here's the other thing. Don't use clickbait, but it kind of, it used to actually work. But now we're all like, uh, I'm aware of it. That's why home value ads are like, uh, people are stepping back from them because they're aware of them. There's so many of them. They're very aware of them. So think about what's actually going to create angst in them. What do they need? So what do you have um, that they could possibly want and how can you say it so that they are so compelled by it that they almost automatically take action and click through your ad? That's what you want to do. The simpler, the better. It is really K-I-S-S. -S, keep it simple. I hate the last part, stupid, because you're not stupid. But K-I-S, we'll do the first part of that. Okay, so keep it simple. Fifth, 
Number five out of the six. What are you measuring? So what do you want your return to be? What do you want to actually achieve from this ad? You know, a certain number of targeted page likes or a certain number of email signups, a certain number of phone calls or direct emails to you. What are you measuring? So what, making sure you measure something that's actually valuable, not a vanity metric. So many times I see agents say, oh yeah, I did this ad or I put this ad on my, or post on my page and then I boosted the post and I got, you know, it says it reached 10,000 people and it, and I got 13 likes on it and I got two shares on it. It doesn't help you. You want to actually have something real, um, a like on a post is not real. A like on a boosted post is not real. That's not an actual, that's a vanity metric. It doesn't actually help you. It didn't help you do anything because thinking that way, uh, like likes and shares and all that stuff on a, on a post like that, that's back in the exposure name awareness because you're, it's not going to work. You want to have a direct driven from here, from here, the unmet to the met from here to here, from the unmet to the closing table, a direct path. The direct path does not include random brand exposure stuff. There's actually a direct path. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter how many people see your ad or even how many people comment on it. What matters is what you choose to measure. If it's valuable, remember you need to measure something that's actually measurable, direct your ad that way and then track it. Hopefully that makes sense. So sixth, how is this ad going to put money in your pocket? So this is kind of a biggie, okay? Um, how will running your ad, let me, how is it gonna put money in your pocket? So do you have a follow-up system in place? Um, do you understand the process from the point of someone responding to your ad to the point of closing on the property? Not only do you understand it, do you have stuff going on the entire way so that they actually don't get lost in the cog. This is where you see a whole bunch of top producers um, saying, and believe me guys, top producers do not have it all together. I, uh, they don't. Um, I have been one. I've worked with enough of them to tell you that their follow-up systems suck as much as yours does. <laughs> so for example, one of the top agents at KW, one of the top agent teams at KW was getting, oh my goodness, thousands of leads a month between Realtor.com, Zillow, and Trulia. They were spending around $35,000 a month to bring in leads. Great. Awesome. Thousands of leads a month. And just by virtue of the quantity, a certain percentage of those leads will always close period. Without having anything in place, a certain percentage will always be the very low hanging fruit and they'll close. It'll be easy to do. However, the other 999 of those leads fell apart because there was no follow-up system in place. Nobody was doing anything to follow those up. So here's what I'm saying about this. You don't need more leads. You need better leads and you need to follow up with the leads that you're getting. I'm not saying call them back in five minutes. You're going to have people that are doing that. Must call them back in five minutes. Okay, whatever. That's not realistic in most situations. What you need is a long-term process. A long-term process that's going to take them on the journey from when they first came to you to when they want to close. And here's the thing. You need better quality leads. And the way to get better quality leads is to do all these things I've just been talking about. Your targeting, the verbiage on your ad, knowing how you're going to track it, what you're going to do with it. So it is insanely better to run an ad for $100 and get two people that you capture into your system than it is to run an ad for $100 and get 59 likes on it way better. So, okay, it costs you $50 per each person. Now, if you drop the ball on these people over time, you just spend $100 for nothing. But if you don't drop the ball, you can convert at least one of them. It's not that hard. It's just consistency. It's about consistency and providing value. It's not hard. You don't have to know sales scripts to do it. You need to be able to help people. This isn't about trying to beat other people out um, on, well, I, I can't figure out to us well, who said they had a friend for a realtor without using the script that people are always talk talking about. Almost every single one. It was really easy because you know what? Their friends that were realtors never followed up with them. 
drop the ball. But if, I, if you're there consistently giving value, guess what? You're the one they're going to use. That's, that overcomes the objection better than a script. And a lot of people feel smarmy using some of those scripts. So if you, if you feel fine with it, do it. I don't care. My point is it's over the long term. It's not whether you call in five minutes or not. You can listen to all of the, you know, whatever leads are converted. If you call within five minutes, who cares? Most people aren't even called at all. It's the consistency guys. So, you know, the, the whole point with this, this one is how is it going to put money in your pocket pocket? Do you have a system in place for it to put money in your pocket? So that's the six. I'm going to start over real quick. The first one, the first, before we get into the six, it's about your mindset. It's about what's in it for the consumer, not for you. Okay. So stop thinking that giving a home value is valuable to the consumer. It's not, it, it's, it's, it's just, it means nothing to them. Um, which is why they don't like giving information on home value ads. The first part of this whole six is one, what is your goal for the ad? The goal, the, the small goal for the ad, not the whole goal, get them to the closing table, but what's your small goal for the ad? Who are you targeting? Are you actually targeting? Are you targeting deep enough? Are you targeting focused enough? Are you targeting specific enough? Third, what are you offering them? Are you offering them something that's, that's actually valuable, um, that they actually want, that they're actually struggling with? That's a solution to a problem. Or are you just offering them a sale, a service? Fourth, what is your call to action? How are you reaching them? How are they, how are you convincing them to listen to you on your ad? Are you actually addressing problems? The conversation in their head? Are you touching any of that? Fifth, what are you measuring? Are you measuring likes, comments, and shares? Or are you, are you measuring email responses? Or are you measuring um, leads into your database? Are you measuring phone calls? What are you measuring? And sixth, how's it gonna put money into your pocket? What's your process to get from the ad to the closing table? Okay, so that was it for the sixth. Sixth, and I did pretty good on time. So what, I know several more have joined. Let me know where you're from. Tell me where you're from in the comments. I love that. And then let me know, have you had a good ad that you've liked on Facebook that you thought had a pretty good results? Um, let me know, yes or no, if you had. And I need a drink of water. Excuse me. Takes me, takes about 20 seconds. Hey, Cheris. Takes about 20 seconds for me to see your responses. So let me know. And who else still here? It doesn't, it's really interesting that it doesn't always show me who's here. It shows me people are here, but it doesn't show me everybody that's popped in. It doesn't always show me. Um, so some of you, it didn't tell me you were here. Like it told me Ben was here. It told me Cheris was here. It told me Lisa was here, but it didn't tell me Mary was here or Jason or Dan. Dan's still here. Awesome. Dan had to comment to let me know he was here. So it's really interesting. Um, this Facebook live stream, it doesn't always, um, it's not always consistent. Any questions, you guys? Any questions on this? I, I kind of went through it fast because I am on a time constraint today. But I really wanted to get through those. It's the very first thing is mindset. Hey, Christopher. He's still here. I like the I like the the sunglasses. <laughs> Always makes me, yeah, I like the sunglasses. I like that one, that emoji. I can't, um, I can talk to you, but I can't actually respond on the comments. A lot of times I'd like to just pop in some emojis, but I think that is probably going to be coming from Facebook live stream. So eventually. Nancy, you're here too. Cool. Yeah, so we have two people from the Phoenix area. Duke needs out. Okay. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? Any other questions? What do you recommend for an ad budget? Okay, so, um, Dan, that's not a question I can answer in simple one, two, three. I'm going to give you a couple tips. Um, when you are running an ad for the first time, when you're first putting it out there, you want to run the ad for about $10 a day for an ad that you're going to want to run like kind of in, per or in perpetuity. Um, you want to push that out there like that. So you, you just know that your first hundred bucks is your test. Okay. And that's about a 10 day test. So $10 a day over 10 days that gets it out there. It gets it, um, into everything. It gets the algorithm, get it going into the algorithm, etc. And then you don't, if you know that this is an ad that you want to keep running, you don't want to turn it off. You just want to not even pause it. You just want to lower the budget. So, um, so recommending for an ad budget, I, I'm going to recommend based on the ad, um, as far as how much to spend every month, gosh, I have spent anywhere from 
$30 a month to, I think the, the most that I've spent is about $5,000 in a month on mine, not on, that doesn't include other agents that I used to do ads for, things like that. Um, that's just my stuff. So for other agents, it really depends. That part, that piece, the overall ad budget depends on how it fits into your entire marketing budget. Um, I do suggest if you're running like pay-per-click or you've, you're, I mean, this is realtor.com and Zillow are not going to like this, but if you're paying for any of those or you're paying for other things, I would seriously lower your budgets on those and put them in Facebook ads right now. Um, because it, it's really the, in the infancy, it's very good results. If you've got the good ads going, I would adjust your budget to put as much into Facebook as possible right now. Eventually it's just going to be a really solid leg of the stool, but right now it is like a huge foundation. So if you can adjust other budget budgets, I would put as much as possible. But you know, that involves a lot of testing and tweaking. Um, a lot of times we do things like, you know, maybe our website designer has some Facebook ads that they are ways to run Facebook ads for you. Those are not good choices to run. You want ads that are actually going to get results. So just pushing your listings out, not such a great thing, especially if you don't actually have a targeted audience that knows, like, and trusts you to want to call you or contact you about the listing. So um, hopefully that answered your question a little bit. So a little bit on the, the very, very specific running a first ad. And then as far as your overall budget, that's, that's very gray area, meaning it depends on your business, your budget, your other stuff. Hopefully that answered that. Thank you for asking that. That's a good one. And it's a very common one. I get a lot. In fact, I think I should probably write an article on, um, Ad budgets for real estate agents. Huh, I'm going to write that down. Alka says, super awesome info. I run ads, but I have issues with conversion. Too many click, not many leads filling the info. Okay, so usually, okay, so there's there could be two places. Um, if you're getting good conversions on the ad, Elkin, then um, like a 4 or 5% or more conversion from Facebook on the ad, like a click-through, that's good. But what's happening, it sounds like either that there's a disconnect between the ad and the landing page. So I would check your landing page. Um, it might be in most cases, I don't know about yours, but in most cases, the landing pages are so stinking busy. Um, and it's not actually a landing page. We just tend to maybe send them to a home search page or we send them to a general page on our website or the um, home value. If we're doing home value ads, we're sending them to a page that just got way too much on it. And I don't just mean we're asking for too much. It's just got way too much. Um, think in terms of super simple, one, maybe two short sentences, period. That's it. That's all you really want on your page. You don't want to explain anything. You just want to extend the ad and give them um, exactly what, here, do this, get this. It's exactly the same as the ad. That's it. That's all you need. Also, ask for as little as possible up front. So, for example, if you do have a two-step process where you actually need more information, start with their name and email. Then go to the next step. Um, but you're going to notice a big drop-off on that. But usually when that happens, Elkin, it's the landing page. It's usually the landing page. Any other questions, you guys? I love these questions. Love them. I am, I'm heading into out and available um, probably sometime in July for other people. You're welcome. Hopefully that helped, Elkin. Um, and um, what we're going to be talking about today is really, you know, um, module three is about the writing, basically, getting, getting your articles out there. But a lot of times people don't realize how important having blog articles that you write, not that you curate and not that somebody else writes, but that you write, People, most people don't realize how important those are in your Facebook ad strategy and how having that will actually change your overall results. Um, you'll, I mean, it'll change your results drastically. Your conversion rates will go up insanely if you know how to create really good content, really good blog posts. And it's not as hard as we think. We just Think in terms of um, blogging our listings or blogging, you know, why you should use a realtor or things like that, which consumer doesn't care about because they don't know, like, and trust you yet. So that's what I'm teaching today. I'm teaching agents how to um, give value, how to uh, write or video so that people go, oh, yeah, I want to take action. And then how to leverage that through ads. 
So that's what we're doing today in Blogging Bootcamp. But the, to, um, I want to answer more questions for you guys. And that's one of the reasons I was kind of talking about this today because the ads, it's such a, a pivotal piece to our ad, our whole, whole entire ad strategy. So to our business strategy. Any other questions, you guys? Need water? Any last minute questions before I sign off? And if you guys need help with Facebook ads, I ha actually have a cheat sheet. Um, I put it in the or in the text of this. It's leadsandleverage.com slash FB. I can't remember the thing. Facebook ads cheat sheet. Oh, it's a FBACS 4B. So you can get a checklist or a cheat sheet on how to do your Facebook ads for buyer leads. It's in the comments. Or not in the comments, it's in the text of this live stream. Any other questions? Anything I can help you with today? Put my screen up so I can see if there are questions that I can respond to. You're welcome, Nancy. Did anybody else notice a uh, changed? Um, yeah, Elkit. So uh, I'll, I'll hold that thought. Um, I, did anybody else notice a change to the layout of their Facebook business page? It has changed. <laughs> the layout's different. Um, it's interesting. Um, and Elkin, yes, the likely to move. I know people are touting it, but it's got, it gets the worst results. Um, just because it's so, it's predictive marketing and they haven't really narrowed it. And I know that places like SmartZip and stuff use that, but it's, it's, it's unpredictable. <laughs> predictive marketing is unpredictable. So, um, good move. Good move on that. Getting more leads from removing it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get going because I need to prep for my blogging boot camp today. Um, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. If you have more questions, ask them. I do come back. I check this constantly. Uh, I check all the responses and stuff like that so that I can help you guys with your questions. So have a fabulous day, fabulous afternoon, and I will see you guys on Monday. Talk to you later. <laughs>